Hi and welcome to the Market Alert uh, for Thursday the 15th of October 2020. So banks, bloodbaths, bonds bid, dollar drops and gold pops. And I couldn't agree more with uh, this uh, quote below. The mad, 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 mad world. Yeah, it certainly is. And uh, I've got a bit more of a, an update uh, in the latter part of the alert. So it could be a long one today. Uh, with regards to a change in the dynamics of what we're seeing going on with uh, covid so I'm just going to highlight this. It's something that came to me at uh, half past four this morning. So it's sort of uh, on the fly, as it were, but uh, managed to, join. I think, join in a few dots together here. Something's uh, very interesting is going on. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, see what you think. But uh, interesting now, it's all going to tie in with uh, our friends at the World Economic Forum. Anyway, let's get on with the, uh, the markets first and have a look and see... Uh, where we are with uh, yesterday, uh, we can see that uh, prices uh, came down to the BRN in the pre-market before the market opened at 8 a.m. You can see we've got the support here down at the close. The market uh, then managed to get back above the 200 bar moving average as well and uh, continued uh, to move to the upside there up towards uh, the DP. But as soon as the market opened, uh, prices uh, were pushed down to the close. You see there, and then you see the buying coming in. We get down to the BRN, and then you'll see the volume building here as we get back to the support at the left there. And there you can see the volume is far greater in this bar than in the previous bar. So we've got the big money buying back into the market there. Prices uh, then see the, the profit taken by the shorts and some other buying coming in and then prices are driven back to the upside to the 200 ma where they meet resistance you can see prices closing below this and uh, the volume also being high however prices fail to close below the five bar moving average in the next bar and then close back or drive back towards the 200 uh, ma and again you can see how this has come off the selling contained inside of this bar but we're still sitting on the close and the five bar moving average as well so now the market's test uh, tested you can see how it was pumped down and then brought back immediately over two minutes just needs to close above the 200 bar moving average in order for prices to uh, move higher and there's a final test Again, if you were to measure from here to here, you would find that this is uh, around 78%, uh, 89% uh, Fib retracement. The testing is done. The volume is high. Quick spike down. All you need to do now, as I just said, is to get above the 200 MA and then you can head up towards the DP. But again, you, if you understand what's happening in each price bar, you can uh, more or less uh, predict what's uh, likely to happen next. And there you see prices starting to move to the upside and uh, trading sideways. And you see the potential weakness coming in in these bars here because you've got uh, resistance to the left at uh, this uh, level just here. So prices uh, then start to get into a sideways move. And I can see I've drawn the line in there. I was just looking to see if prices had got the uh, any interest in moving to the upside, and they did. Uh, and then, interestingly enough, prices uh, drove through. This is an interesting bar here because the volume is greater than the previous bar. The range is greater in the previous bar, but the volume is less. So again, there's some selling here, and this is sort of confirmed with this potential weakness here as well. So unless there's any new buying to come and drive the market uh, to the upside from here, then uh, I'm afraid it's a case of uh, we'll see prices move to the downside, which uh, they did. As you see, prices are closing back below the DP level there. They bring it back for a moment. And again, another fascinating picture here. Uh, I was looking to uh, get short, but then all of a sudden we had this bar here. And you can see the volume there is far greater than the previous bar, even though it's below the average. It's these subtleties that you become trained to see. Uh, again, bringing the market back. Prices closed off the low as well. And then uh, you can see starting to move higher. But again, if nobody joins the party, then prices are not going to uh, move higher. I'm going to look at the daily chart here just to see where we are. We've got a long way to go to get back to the high. 
we've got some buying there but then immediately you can see we're hit by the selling there again which the range of the bar is narrower than the previous bar and the volume is greater with prices closing on the low and then uh, you'll see here prices hugging the dp level which is uh, perfectly normal as you then go into uh, the mid-morning uh, session there so i'm going to fast forward you can see that uh, price is breaking the the dp there after the 10 a.m cutoff and price is trading down to the 200 ma bouncing off the dp eventually again you can see the increase in volume as prices broke the 200 ma and uh, then continued lower until you get this big spike in volume where they buy at uh, the brn but i'm going to fast forward through this because there was a pattern there all the way through and then you'll see uh, prices being brought back all the way till we get to the uh, afternoon uh, session here as uh, prices come back towards the dp having closed back above the 200 ma so we started off with a bit of selling and then the market was uh, again brought back here as uh, at the 200 ma and then uh, up to the dp which uh, you can see there price is driving all the way up with uh, some professional buying and then uh, stopping at the dp and they're doing their best to hold the market at this level and again you can see in this price bar here that uh, prices have come off the high there's an increase in volume but not as much as i was uh, hoping for as hoping for a, a sort of a, this type of volume there just to give a clue that the dp was uh, going to be uh, a really resistant area for prices to move higher they tried again here but there was no major volume uh, to, to, to talk of again you was expecting a lot more volume to drive through that area and it didn't materialize then we've got some potential weakness there and prices are just not making it to the upside we've got some selling and then prices close below the 20 bar moving average at this uh, point here which is a 62 percent retracement from here to here uh, the market uh, sort of bit of support coming in they try and hold prices but fail to do so even after testing we had two bars that closed above the five bar moving average and the increase uh, in volume but uh, failed to hold and then prices uh, found support at the 200 ma initially which uh, you can see here but as prices fail to close above the five bar moving average they then uh, move lower and again they try and bring these back again you see the profit take in here at uh, towards the close of the previous day session there back to the 20 bar moving average and then managed to uh, see prices trading sideways uh, to higher until we get uh, in this bar here We've got some potential weakness but the bar after is even more interesting because again it's narrowing range prices come off the low so we know there's some buying here it's whether there's enough to move the market back to the upside there on this occasion there was no interest and prices uh, closed back below the five bar moving average and uh, then started to trade uh, sideways uh, to lower there and continued lower through the remainder of the session as the Dow moved lower so let's have a look at the overnight uh, in the daily chart so you can see prices are holding at 38% uh, retracement that we have drawn in from uh, here to here so at the moment there is a bit of support for the market there let's have a look in more detail we can see uh, overnight uh, prices uh, came off uh, the low from yesterday no surprise there trading up towards uh, the DP sort of a triple top there had a shakeout uh, in the early hours of 2.30. You can see this here. Uh, once they've broken the 200 MA as well. And then prices have uh, moved. And they're now brought back to uh, yesterday's low. And now just above the 200 MA. So free sort of to move to the upside there. Let's have a look at uh, the Dow overnight. Just to see what uh, is going on. That too is showing the same picture. Uh, yesterday afternoon let's just go back to yesterday evening you can see that uh, 
late afternoon that prices uh, were hammered to the downside in the Dow, which also took uh, the DAX with it. But that was after 4.30 p.m. OK, let's have a quick look at uh, the implied volatility. This uh, down slightly uh, yesterday, which is odd given what the market did, but it's uh, again still on the upside uh, move. And the same for the color coded volatility as well. It's green at the moment, indicating that prices could move to the upside. Uh, news today, we've got a European uh, economic summit. I think there's a no deal Brexit thing coming in the next couple of days if there is no deal done. Amazing how that's uh, disappeared off the news uh, since the virus uh, turned up. And uh, the criminals out later, she's speaking at 5 p.m. And in between that, you've got the uh, Philly Fed and the unemployment claims as well. Right, uh, also, let's just have a, a quick look at what I was talking about at uh, the the uh, intro. Uh, Trump versus the deep state, uh, something that uh, has always been the case. He is not part of the club. He can't be bought. He had, doesn't take a salary. So he's his own man, which is uh, why you get all the negative stuff about him. I'm not a fan, by the way. I'm not a fan of anybody. I'm apolitical. I have no interest in the political system or any politician. I don't favour one above the other. Um, and I think a lot of people have come to that conclusion. But from the outset, Trump has always been an outsider. That's why, you know, Hillary was going to win hands down, etc. But the people have seen something different. Uh, and then now, uh, definitely, with uh, what's going on. So as it says here, the latent conflict between the deep state and the elected representatives of the American people has come to a head during the Trump uh, presidency, certainly. Um, but Trump, uh, for all of his other irritating features, I suspect that he is not part of the ruling elite, which, like I say, is the irritation. And over the last 24 hours, two things have uh, come to light. And this is unusual. This is the mainstream media, New York Times as well. Uh, White House embraces COVID-19 uh, herd immunity declaration. They're referring to the Barrington Declaration there, where all of the uh, scientists uh, of, uh, uh, I think it's 11,000 of them now, have come out and said, look, you know, what's going on is uh, not right. Well, it won't be, will it? Because uh, you've got to latch on the World Economic Forum to that. Even here, the uh, World Health Organization has backflipped on its original COVID-19 stance after calling for world leaders to stop locking down their countries and economies. Uh, and this is interesting as well, because I thought the World Health Organization was going to be linked to the World Economic Forum in some way, shape or form, but obviously not. And they're seeing the destruction that is being wrought by these lockdowns across the globe. And and again, if you don't uh, ha you know tie in the... Uh, the, the World Economic Forum and their agenda, then uh, the whole thing doesn't make any sense. The confusion, the lockdowns, the regional lockdowns, the tiered system, uh, and all of this based upon the fact that there's a 99.9% .9 recovery rate and, um, you know, just a, a, the, the average age of, of deaths from COVID is 82 years of age, which is what you'd expect with any influenza or flu, but I'm not going to get into that. It's just this change in what we're seeing here that uh, Trump is a lone voice now and he's saying, no, we're not doing it anymore. And now he's got the um, the, the, the who uh, on his side as well saying this. Uh, they don't say that they're not uh, um, completely against lockdowns. What they're saying is that, yeah, it can be used initially, but I'll put the links in the in the description so that you can actually go and look at these. But Trump came out uh, last night as well. Uh, about the lockdowns, uh, which again, I'll put the, the link in there as well. I won't, uh, you know, so let me just, there you go. So you can see uh, what he's got to say there, they're unscientific, etc. Uh, but there's this massive change all of a sudden. So it's sort of Trump against the World um, Economic Forum. The WHO are getting jittery about what's going on, the lives that are being destroyed by this virus. They realize that it's not as uh, potent as first deemed but of course once you tie in all of this it makes perfect sense the control of millions and uh, billions of individuals through the world economic forum the resetting of our lives uh, this build back better logo that you we, we've spoken about before i mean what politically has these two in common absolutely nothing yet they're sharing the same logo 
the same with uh, even from uh, these two uh, to Trudeau and uh, Boris absolutely nothing and the same whichever way you crisscross this none of them share the same political ideology but they're all part of the World Economic Forum Club and this man isn't he wants none of it he can see what's going on he's against it and uh, this is why I believe that he's come out and he's now back, uh, backing the Barrington Declaration and also uh, the World Health Organization's ch uh, change of stance with regards to this as well. You're not going to get this in the UK though, I'm afraid. It's not going to happen. Uh, we can see where we're heading with uh, another four-week uh, lockdown. We'll also be get a sweetener where we'll be told that uh, we'll be free for Christmas, to enjoy Christmas. Well, happy bloody Christmas, that's all I can say, if that's going to be the case. But you won't get Christmas anyway, because I'll say we've do, you know, we're have you know, we doing such a great job in getting the numbers down that we need to continue with the lockdown. But you can see where it's going, but you can see this sort of global thing now that's starting to take shape here, where uh, the WHO have sort of, hang on a minute, you know, this is, <laughs> we only meant it to start with, just so we could get a, a handle on it. Uh, we didn't mean this to continue, but like I say, as soon as you tie in this, now we can start to really see the picture unfolding here. Uh, completely different political views and dogmas, and now we're seeing uh, something very, very sinister starting to unfold here with these uh, megalomaniacs who are part of the WFE. And my final thoughts on this are quite uh, logical, actually. In order to build back better you have to destroy something first. That's what they do in the army. They destroy the individuals when they join and they build them back up in the way that they want them. And that's exactly what you're seeing here, which is why the WHO are panicking about uh, the lockdowns and uh, Trump is saying no more because he's seen it destroy America. The elites want this. Trump doesn't want it. But this is the fundamental part. In order to build back, this is the key to this logo. In order to build back, you have to destroy everything in order to create the new paradigm. And that's what we're seeing with the, the lockdowns. Okay, that's it for this one. As ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.